I'm Adam Lukey, music director for the Buffalo Philharmonic Chorus. And there's one thing that makes singers special compared to all other musicians, and that's the words. We get words to sing. And so a fundamental technique of singing is how we form words or use our articulators. Those are our lips, our teeth, and our tongue. How we create sounds with either vowels, ah, e, e, o, or how we create consonants. Some, some consonants, um, like L, use your tongue to make a sound. Some consonants use just your, use your tongue and your teeth. Some consonants use just your lips, like P. You don't need any part of your mouth except your lips to make those consonants. So when you make consonants, no matter what they are, whether they're um, unvoiced, like a P, just air, no sound at all, or a voiced, like a V, you need to make them um, as quick as possible. So voice consonants can have length of time. Um, unvoiced consonants generally don't, they're just like immediate. But no matter what, you want them to happen as fast as possible, usually, almost always, before the beat, where the sound is gonna happen on the beat. Okay, so the sound is carried by your vowels, so your consonants are gonna happen before the beat. And so you can practice this, just like we did kind of with the breathing exercises, of putting consonants in a rhythmic pattern. Okay, so find that nice alignment, get ready for a nice low breath, and we're just gonna say k, 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 really fast on my karate chop. Ready, go. That is how you line up consonants. You can do it with a voice consonant, with a v or a w. Let's do w and a w, w, w. Now let's do v, 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 v. Let's do a um, k, l, k, 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 or maybe g, l, gl, gl, gl. That's a hard one because there's a g is in there too. Some consonants happen at the end of a vowel, like if you're saying the word beginning, and the consonant can sneak in and lengthen. You want to can lengthen and take away the time from the vowel. So you don't want to do that either. You want to lengthen the vowel like this. Here, well, here's the bad way. Beginning. You don't really often do that. Um, maybe for like, very rarely for a specific occasion for your conductor once. But almost 100% of the time, you're gonna go lengthen the vowel, consonant fast. So here's my karate chop for the consonant, and here's the vowel. Say beginning with me. Beginning. And it cuts right off. So the ing, none of the ng happens in the middle of that vowel, or on the pitch, for instance. Now, there are different types of vowels, of course, too. So we have some vowels that are kind of made in the back of our mouth, o, u, and we have vowels that are made in the front of our mouth, e, a. And so uh, thinking about how you shape the vowels, you want to be able to move um, from the uh, shaping them in a nice balanced position, talking about the same kind of space, vertical, horizontal, dark, front, back, all of that, that those dimensions of space work with how you make the vowels. So the forward vowels, like E, can be really bright. E and we're gonna work from that brightness all the way to the darkness, the, the, the back vowels. Forward vowel to back vowel. E, A, A, O, U. Say it with me. E, A, A, O, U. One more time. E, A, A, Oh, ooh. So now let's sing it. Try that. And you can feel the sound move from one part of your voice to another. So vowels are really important about balancing that space. And where you are in your range is going to make a difference. If you're higher, some of those brighter vowels are going to have a little bit more ver vertical space than, than in the middle of your voice. So you might modify them. Actually, modifying is really good when you get to the top of your range. It just means adding more vertical space for the vowel so that it has more space for the sound to resonate in. So it means making that E an E. It means making that A an E. So like fit or headache. So it's going to sound like this. We're going to start a higher pitch. We'll start up there. So I'm going to start instead of on E, I'm going to start on an E. Okay, so let's try that. Not even modify. 
modified ooh there a little bit to more uh instead of ooh. So that's how you modify. You kind of create more space for that vowel. Let's do it again. It's e, e, a, o, u. Okay? Starting here. E so that's how you can use the vowels to create the right sounds for the words and for communicating with your articulators. Now, there's one other kind of hairy thing that happens with vowels um, in English. There's, there's a thing called mixed vowels, which is in other languages. I won't talk about that today. Um, but in, in English, we have uh, diphthongs. We have two vowels in the same sound, and they happen one after the other. They're not mixed together. It's like the word high. And so H-I-G-H, high. You have ah on that vowel, and then at the last second, you have e. Now, some people say hi, and they lengthen that last vowel too much, okay, the second vowel. In singing, you always sing the first vowel as long as possible until you can put the last vowel on E, okay? So when we sing the word hi, hi, you want to stick that E on right there at the end. Let's do that together. Sing the word hi. Hi. Ready? Go. Hi, and you stick the E on right at the last possible second. So anytime you see a, a diphthong, which is two sounds, not necessarily two letters, you want to have that, sing it that way. Now, like the word hi, H-I-G-H, -H, that's just one letter of the alphabet, but it's two sounds. And sometimes in English we have two letters that make one sound. Um, in French they have like eight letters that make one sound. But um, wherever you, it's all about the number of sounds that you're dealing with. Ha, -i, okay? So make sure that you do that when you sing a diphthong to control the sound and so that you um, have a nice, that makes the, the word much clearer to hear and much clearer to sing. Because singing is all about communicating and you need to be able to sing those words so that they can be heard and understood clearly to communicate the music and the essence of the music.